Hey everyone, it's Lindsay, and thanks for tuning in to First Aid Express. Today, we're talking about something that's very use it or lose it, our skeletal muscle. Many of you may have been unfortunate enough to break a bone growing up and notice that you lost a lot of muscle mass after that cast came off, or noticed all those gains whenever you hit the gym every January for your New Year's resolution. Our muscles undergo significant changes, all depending on what stimulus, or lack thereof, we give them. Think of this video as an adjunct to our express fact on the three types of muscle, also voiced by yours truly. So for more on skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle, check it out. But let's hit the books and flex that brain with skeletal muscle adaptations today. Today, we have a pretty quick fact for you. We will describe the nuclear and cellular changes that skeletal muscles undergo during atrophy and hypertrophy. Let's get a move on. First, let's warm up our brain slow and get ready to gain some facts and mass. After all, that's exactly what hypertrophy is. An increase in muscle size accompanied by an increase in myofibrillar protein. But how does this happen? Well, a lot of repetitions and increased input. Increased neural drives by training with weights or resistance stimulates protein synthesis and incorporation of more myofibrils within existing ones. The muscle gains that you get in the gym are made of parallel additions of sarcomeres in each cell, rather than an increase in number. So that the next time we tackle those dumbbells, we can generate more force coming from all those myofibrils. And during muscle hypertrophy, we see an increase in the number of myonuclei as well. But why? Satellite cells within our muscles are the muscle stem cell population. When our muscles are exposed to heavy mechanical loads, they activate and enter into the cell cycle to eventually fuse with existing myofibrils. The donation of myonuclei assists in the increased transcriptional requirement needed to keep up with all those muscle growths and repair. After all, all the proteins and sarcomeres behind our gym gains have to come from somewhere. And this is where we get to the use it or lose it part of our lesson. Despite many of our best efforts, after the first few weeks of January rolls around, the motivation to be a gym rat fades, and so will all the gains we got from those bench presses. Muscle atrophy is the other side of the skeletal muscle adaptation coin and represents a loss of skeletal muscle mass. This loss of mass is accomplished by the ubiquitin proteasome system that targets myofibril proteins and slowly but surely degrades all of our gains at a surprisingly quick rate. Atrophy often happens due to the lack of input that comes in many different ways, like immobility. Remember that bone break as a kid? A cast is a perfect example of what we see on the left, in addition to aging, malnutrition, or neurological disease. Another instance is the lack of resistance or weight bearing that we see in our astronauts. In space, our muscles are not subjected to gravitational forces, so it's common to see muscle atrophy in astronauts who spend a prolonged amount of time in space. It's certainly a force of nature when they land back on Earth with the literal weight of the world pulling them down. And with muscle atrophy and loss of protein synthesis, we see a corresponding decrease in the number of myonuclei. Since the muscle fibrils don't have increased transcriptional needs, quite the opposite, we see a reduction in their nuclei thanks to selective apoptosis. However, this doesn't mean your muscles can't hypertrophy, regain mass, and increase those nuclei numbers. Despite atrophy, the muscle fibers keep a reserve of satellite cells ready for next January when we get off the couch and into the gym once again trying to turn over a new exercise leaf. Before you go, let's check in with a quick flash quiz. In muscle hypertrophy, what cells are the source of the donated myonuclei? Satellite cells. These cells are the stem cell reserve for skeletal muscle cells, and when subjected to increased forces like weight and resistance, they proliferate, fuse, and donate their nuclei to the muscle cells so that they can meet transcriptional demand. The takeaways that we have for this video are as simple as a summary table in the musculoskeletal chapter of your first aid book. With hypertrophy, we have increased muscle mass through implementing more myofibrils in parallel and increased myonuclei donated from satellite cells. And during muscle atrophy, we see a decrease in myofibrils through ubiquitin-mediated degradation and fewer myonuclei due to selective apoptosis. And that's that. Again, my name is Lindsay, and it's been a joy walking you through First Aid's musculoskeletal chapter. If you thought this video was helpful, throw a thumbs up down below. I'll see you back here for more First Aid Express videos. Good luck and happy studying.